This is a book review of Showcase Presents Shazam! Over 500 pages of comics. And you've got that brilliant Captain Marvel, or Shazam, as he said. And this is this came out in 2006, quite a while ago now. I'm quite surprised, and it's so long ago. But this was part of a series of ongoing... I think this was quite an early one as well, of, of these books. But they're all black and white. All black and white. I know lots of people don't like black and white. Now, if you want the colour, then you're going to have to go for, I think, the... Uh, there's a Shazam, The Mightiest Mortal, Volume 1 and Volume 2. There's also a Volume 3 coming out shortly, and that's going to have the stories that should have been in the Volume 2, I would have thought. Sadly, it was never a Volume 2. Uh, obviously, The World's Finest and the Adventure Comics, and also, I assume, some other ones maybe as well. But it's uh, 526 pages, so quite a nice, chunky, quite a chunky volume. And that's the thing. You've got a lot of great stories. And what does it cover? It covers Shazam, and this came out. I'm 73, February 1973, one near enough at the point where I first started really collect comics. And I did get that issue, that issue Shazam 1 to 33. And what does it include? Well, it's got lots and lots of great stories with Dr. Savannah, Black Adam, Mr. Mind, Monster Society of Evil. Well, and, and so on. There's lots and lots of great stories. I think it's just brilliant. I just love these stories. And they're just... And also the Marvel family themselves. So it's not just Captain Marvel or Shazam. So that's quite good as well. So still holding up quite nicely this volume. I think it's quite obviously it's slightly this is, I think this is going to be the problem with a lot of these sort of showcase books. They're all going to go a bit like that. But uh, I think it's still good. And I enjoy black and white. I've no problem being British, got used to black and white comics over the years in the 70s and 80s, whatever. We used to lots of those sort of comics. Now, most of our comics are in colour. But uh, back in the day, black and white. So nothing. You've got lots and lots of stories. So if there's one story you don't like, you flip through very quickly to the next story. So that's always quite good. So Captain Marvel, of course, was four six comics back in the day, back in the 40s, 50s, of course, it was, I think about 1953 or something. Of course, it was... I'm not going to go into the issues, you can read up about that. Obviously now DC Comics are printing these and, well, I think they're pretty good. But unfortunately they're not printing the ones from the old old ones from the Golden Age. I would love them to do that. Now they did bring out an archives collection. There was, like, I think, only about four or five vol volumes of uh, Marvel family and uh, see Captain Marvel himself. So there's a, there's a real massive amount of possible comics that could be uh, reprinted i would love to see love to see them in this sort of volume i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon but uh, still i can always hope so onto the story shazam well what is it obviously a young lad of course uh, anyone probably seen the film which i thought was thoroughly enjoyable very funny film and uh, this is the thing about captain marvel or shazam compared with with one magic word one first brand new first brand new issue Anyway, the way it says 20 cents back then, uh, February 1973. And you've obviously got been introduced as well by Superman, no less, which is pretty good. Superman sort of occasionally sort of turns up in this. So it's, you've got a few guest stars, not many actually. There's not, there's actually more guest stars who turn up, like Kid Eternity turns up, which is really nice. And there's a couple of other characters that turn up who are from various comics. Kid Eternity, of course, being uh, quality comics and not. So why you would have known him, I don't know, but that's a different issue. Well, part of the DC Universe, so obviously he knew him. But you got there. Turns into Captain Marvel, obviously, with the uh, lightning there, when he calls, says out his name. And of course you've got the other characters. To be honest, I would love to see uh, collections of like Mary Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr., etc. as well. They are great characters. Really, really, I think they're brilliant. And, well, he is as well. And they are fun all the way through. And that's the one thing that I think is always... A, I'm actually just reading this. I just got this one. I know it's completely unrelated. And it's, but I, I love Mockingbird. Mockingbird. And I was just reading that. And actually, they are so much fun. And to me, that's always... I mean, it's nice to have grim and miserable sort of, or whatever, vicious comics where a bit of the world is ending and, you know, Infinity Gauntlet is destroying everything. Fine. I love that. As much as, but I do generally miss this. I mean, there's a whole heaps of like there was like a Marvel bunny sort of one. I just love those stories. Those stories are just so silly and fun. And this is what this book is. So you've got here where he gets obviously gets his powers, and you've got him standing there, obviously, or the world's mightiest mortal. 
though, slightly baffling. Surely Superman's the mightiest mortal as well, because he's mortal last time I checked. So it's a slightly confusing term. But anyway, we're not, let's, what's your name on that one? But you've got, obviously, you've got all the various Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, Mercury, and all that. So he's got all these things. Quite often, uh, well, I suppose he does show speed occasionally because he whizzes around the world quite quickly. Uh, and obviously, uh, Achilles' courage. Luckily, he didn't have courses. So. <laughs> However, you've got, of course, the. They were frozen. That's the explanation. A mm, bit like Captain America kind of thing, being frozen in ink. But this time they were frozen because of some, which was actually used later. But it was it was quite nice. He's done. He rescues obviously his, his family, and he get they go back and uh, say them. But it's a good way of making sure that all the characters, though probably hard to com hard to work out how they suddenly then get back into society. They turn up well, only twenty or thirty years afterwards. That they suddenly accepted very well. Your bank account, well, we froze that years ago. Well, you've got no money now. Oh, okay, that kind of thing. So, but you've got the great, you've got like obviously the, every character there, just brilliant. Obviously, the villains as well. And you've got a uh, lovely little article there, and it's actually quite nice because you've got a it gives you a Uncle Dudley, uh, Miss Joan Jameson, you've got Ma Potter, pa Potter, Sissy Summerley, Billy's. She doesn't turn up too often. Uh, Mr. Talky Towney or Tawny, the talking tiger. That's a bit of a hard one, alliteration. <laughs> However, it was an ordinary tiger, but he, of course he's uh, raises the boys' bet and obviously can speak, so which is very useful. And uh, it's quite nice. There's a good story where he's speaking, and he can speak, with, of course, with animals and things. It's, so he has a chat occasionally, and everyone's, all they can hear is certain. Uh, Quite nicely done. Anyway, also you've got all the covers, of course, which is really good. I love these. Uh, these covers are great. The original Captain Marvel. The original Captain Marvel. Oh, well. I love Captain Marvel from, uh, of course, Marvel Comics as well. So, uh, But it, the artwork is great. This is the thing I love about these. And I'm going to... Oh, that annoying character. That nice kid up ahead needs our help. But it is nice actually that they introduced all the uh, they got like here they got the uh, Mary Marvel all the characters and they they don't have much of the story they have quite a bit they turn up quite a bit but again the, the slight issue with this book which is thing is that would be nice of course if they'd had more of those sort of stories as well the other the family members but also look at that artwork that artwork's just great really great but you've got of course he's a <laughs> great villain there. I back. But it's, it would have been nice if they'd included the reprints of the Golden Age ones. I don't know why they didn't include those. They're just such a, just a big, because I think they would have been brilliant addition to the stories. And okay, it would have meant you would have had to have a couple more volume, a volume, additional volume. But I I would have bought it. I would have bought, definitely bought it. And I, because I bought those 100 page giants. I love those 100 page giants. They're never the same now. They never will be the same. It was just that, that period when they were reasonably priced, reasonably and you had that just just exposure to a whole heap of characters and things and stories that you know you just did not see never knew anything about the golden age material so it was just great but actually i think it's caught this very well i mean obviously you can never catch it exactly it's a completely different time no point turning around and saying it ever can it's like turning around if someone did a comic now of these stories they would never do it like this and obviously now the shazam stories are very different from these early stories. So if you're going to come to it from expecting, like say, the, the grittiness that comes in the uh, the later ones, these are just. I mean, there's lots of stories where you got you got Billy Batson, Batson, whatever you want to call his name, just transforming in front of people, and no one ever. I mean, is there some sort of amnesic uh, effect that people forget? I Means it. Well, hang on, where's Billy got? Has he been evaporated? Because suddenly Captain Marvel said, "Woohoo!" And no one, obviously, the villains seem to know who he is. I mean, it was a ridiculous thing. He goes along, and the times he gets captured, and they put a what's that over his, you know, you think, wouldn't it be just the simplest solution? You got this superpower, Black Adam, doomed, just do X, Y, Z, take him to the moon or something. That solves the problem. Won't be able to say much there. Anyway, that would not fit in with this fun element in the comic. And that's the thing. None, none of these stories you can take seriously because they're they're quite quick stories. I mean, I, let's say I'm going to go. Most are, you know, there's only eight pages. Eight pages there. Better late than never. 
And now the artwork does change at times. Obviously, later you've got the early, <coughs> sorry, you've got the early parts of the story where you've got obviously CC Beck doing that, and then it does change, but still not actually in a bad way. I mean, I really thought the artwork was superb, absolutely. And this one's lovely. I love stories. Yeah, Christmas story. A year without Christmas, you've got obviously. Uh, <laughs> they're always. He's, he's also got the fact his family as well. And they're all sort of sitting there plotting about what they can do to freeze, get or move. So if they've got about a couple of minutes of Christmas Day, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but everyone would just have their Christmas presents on Boxing Day instead, wouldn't they? That's such a weird idea. But however, me equivalent on that sort of story. But it's still great. But the artwork is great all the way through this. And I love this one. There's, and they also have some individual stories as well. So you've got a Mary Marvel story here as well. It's actually very nicely drawn. Actually, a bit like Supergirl. You quite often. Actually, I'm surprised they didn't. And there's no Supergirl story. It would have been really nice if had Supergirl meets Marvel Girl kind of story. Why well, they didn't do that? The Shazam Girl. I don't know what they say there. Holy moly! And I love the way she just stands there and just holds her hand out. One scene, bang! All the you know the car just sort of collapses on itself, which probably would not be very good for the people occupants. Unless I don't know. They obviously have a nice. Uh, Anyway. But obviously they go out and they obviously fire and then she sort of gets tickled as the uh, machine gun fire because of course she's invulnerable like Captain Marvel is and that's uh, a key thing in this story. There's always a, but actually that's quite a key thing in the story as well because of course she doesn't have to worry and that's the thing with a lot of these stories that they've got no problems. They can do literally, they can be hit, bumped, whatever. There never seems to be any weakness really for Captain Marvel other than the key witness a weakness where he ends up saying his name by accident or whatever by design so we're going along there's a lovely bit where you've got this car and it's Shazam of it and of course you have to be very you don't quite often just see him stop no don't want to say it don't want to, and it must be it would have been if it was a real character we like so easy to say it by accident back suddenly lightning and of course you're exposed to some issue you're suddenly standing in the crowd and everyone's going well that's and then, of course, they still forget two minutes later. So, and you've got also lots of these lovely characters. There's lots of like these additional characters that are added into the story. I love this one, the Rock of Eternity, which you've got. And it also, actually, the story's changed quite a bit now. This is a bit that slightly changed, but I guess at that point they realised they really got to. And this is one of the places where they've got this se separation where there's no story. So obviously, uh, you've got book length blockbuster i don't know if that was a reprint from earlier stories or if these were stories that were obviously uh, from the golden age reprints i guess so you got robin hood there as well world's master boy and so on and so on but the stories did change suddenly you end up and of course this was around 77 that sort of period where obviously uh, American independence and you had all the stories obviously they were going around all the different cities in around America I suppose they felt that really we can't just stay in one place we're going to go off to Philadelphia we're going to go off to Boston and they got those stories all the way through and this one is weird DC TV comic so obviously Shazam and I don't know I guess he must have been on TV uh didn't see that in the UK. I mean, it's possible it was on. So many shows that I've been told already that have been certain series that I mentioned that's not been shown have been shown in the UK. So it's quite possible that Shazam was on that. So uh, anyway, you've got Black Adam. Black Adam turns up in the story finally. And actually, again, it's not the Black Adam that's in a sense that's a lot later on where you've got that sort of sort of storyline of sort of. Yeah, he's treated more as a character fun. He's obviously brought back by you know who, a certain character that uh, has problems with all the way through. But it's just absolutely brilliant. I think it's just a really, really good story. The last story here, this is number 33. You've got this weird uh, Mr. Atom and uh, the Indianapolis. Shazam at Mobile. A bit worrying that. I, I was thinking I, if they had gone to 34, 35 and it kept that Sh Shazam Mobile. That would have been terrible, but a bit like the Spider-Mobile or the Superman-Mobile. I'm certain there was one. Probably not. Why? Why would you need one? However, that's it. This, like I say, is an absolutely brilliant... I don't think there's like a... There's not really a bad story in this. And also one of these things I love about these books is, or obviously any of these series, is that you can then go back 
and you can look through the series at any point. That's the great thing. It's not really, there's no real, you know, you must read it from, it's not like nowadays where you get these books where it's like a thousand pages and you have to read all the way through the story. Here you can just dip in. That's why it's slightly odd when you got to the end where there was a sort of Bill, Billy going through various places and he would obviously, but there was no, still no continuity particularly in the sense that it mattered if you read Boston before one or the other. But it's just great, just fun, fun, fun. And I did laugh quite a few places. I just thought this is just plain silly and thoroughly enjoyable because of it. And I love the uncle as well. That's just great, great sort of uh, story. So this one, Showcase presents Shazam. I absolutely love this. Like I love many of these wonderful Showcase present volumes. They are really good. But again, like I said, if you want it, obviously in colour, it's best to go and check out. Obviously there are other ones, the Mightiest Mortal volumes one and two that would be probably better. But for me, I'm definitely happy with the black and white. I'm not going to get the uh, colour ones, other than the uh, the volume three. I will be getting that when it comes out, which is apparently very soon. So uh, I'm looking forward to read the rest of the stories because I actually looked for those online, and there, some weird reason, I don't think there's any copies available in the UK of those issues. Strange. So, brilliant. absolutely, totally recommended.